Now the rut is upon us. It's that time of year. We've just about made it through the pre-rut time. And um, in 2019, when is the best time for the rut? When is the rut in your area? Well, guess what? I hate to burst the bubble of whatever kind of charts or theories that are out there, but the rut happens at the same time every year in the same location. There's no variance. There is some variance though when it comes to the rutting activity. And we'll talk about the rut times. I just want to cover this really briefly, but the, the rutting activity, of course, if it's really hot during the day and it's really windy, bad weather, rain blowing, then especially if it calms at night, there's going to be a lot more rut activity taking place under the cover of darkness. And that's why you can go from one year to the next. And I'll think back, I think it was uh, 2012 versus 2013 versus 2014. There's some huge variance where you look at October and the temperature in one year is going like this, just gradual up and down for the highs and lows all the way through October. And then another October is going like this. And if you look at November to November, it's the same thing. When you have this, there's awesome ruts because you have drops in temperatures. You have feeding spurns. When, when deer are not feeding, they feed five times in 24 hour periods. So when you have heavy weather go through, when you have hot weather, it suppresses feeding opportunities. They get hungry. Temperatures falling causes loss of energy. Stress in the woods with noise and wind and rain causes loss of energy. And then certainly when there's big temperature drops in those extreme weather times are happening, deer missing feedings or missing quality feedings. And when it breaks, then they're ready to put the feed bag on and they move a lot more. A lot of times, and even studies show this, it's not that they're moving more during those periods. It's that they're moving more during daylight. And that's key. So when you see a variance in the rut, look to the weather as far as daylight or nocturnal activity when it comes to that. But then at the same time, every rut is different. Pre-rut, some people experience pre-rut because if they have older bucks like these on the walls running around, then you're gonna see a lot of rutting sign, you're gonna see a lot of rubs, you're gonna see a lot of scrapes, you're gonna see a lot of aggressive rubs and scrapes. And if you have a bunch of immature bucks running around, you're just not gonna experience that explosion of rutting sign. There's been some good studies to show that a year and a half old buck, first set of antlers, a yearling, that yearling buck is going to make a few scrapes, maybe a few rubs, that's it. When he gets to two years old, it's an exponential amount of growth for the number of rubs and scrapes. So a two-year-old's gonna rub a lot more than a yearling. A three-year-old's gonna rub a lot more than a two-year-old. When you get into four and five, they lay down some really serious and huge rut sign and that goes back to you're going to experience the pre-rot if you have to a really high intense degree if you have those mature bucks running around we've had a great pre-rot right now these last 10 days of october it's october 30th right now and uh and you know we have some great footage you've had some great encounters with some four-year-olds i had some bucks that i probably maybe should have shot a couple of them but um at the same time it's still young the rut is a marathon not a sprint and, and I've been able to enjoy some great times in the woods. I feel like I've gained some knowledge. You can never stop learning as a hunter, and it's been a great experience. Well, now, talk about the rut times, the timing in your area. Pretty simple. Uh, we'll look at an area of, let's say, Minnesota to Wisconsin to Michigan to Pennsylvania to New York. You look at the last 10 days, last week of October, and you look for those cold fronts during that time because it's not that the cold weather or the weather is inducing the rut or causing does to come in estrus by any means, but it does create daylight or nocturnal activity. And so if I'm gonna go hunting, I'm gonna choose daylight activity over nocturnal. And I'm sure that's what you're, you wanna do too. And what that means is if it's hot and windy during the day in that last seven to 10 days of October in those states, then probably not a great day to go out and enjoy the rut. At the same time, I love hunting in the pre-rut and hunting in the pre-rut hours is in the morning hours is awesome because deer are going to move a lot more in the morning and especially mature bucks in the cool of the day there's studies that show they'll move three times more during daylight in the morning hours than they will in the afternoon hours and i believe that's true especially in the pre-rut during the day they're taking a nap and it's warming up it might warm up to 57 62 degrees but it might have been 29 in the morning October 14th, we actually had a first frost. We had some great movement, even though it wasn't quite the pre-rut. The deer were starting to tell they're getting on edge a little bit, and that pre-rut was just around the corner. 
So you look at those states in that line. Once you start getting into the last 31st of October, 1st of November, 2nd of November, boy, there's a lot of does coming into estrus. You know, maybe the peak of estrus might be the 8th, the 10th, or 12th, but there's a lot going on at that time and a lot of does coming in. And let's face it, there's a lot fewer bucks than does. So if you have even a third of the does coming into estrus by the end of October, early November, then you're going to have a huge amount of rutting activity taking place. And most of those bucks are going to be locked up with does. And that's where it gets into the rut lockdown is those first four or five days in November. To me, every buck at the party has a date and all those does are willing, ready, able, maybe not so willing, but they're going to get chased and, uh, and the rut's going to be on. And then it explodes after that. Once we get into the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, all the way through the 14th, boy, you could shoot a monster from a mile away. You could shoot a core buck that lives just 200 yards down in the hollow or around the corner in a swamp. Great activity, great time. And so that's how I look at that. You have that last 7 to 10, ten days, and that would apply to Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, and the, in that area, maybe even over into New Hampshire, Vermont, and uh, in Maine, and then when you get into the first part of November, you have a lot of bucks that are starting to get locked up. And then after that, that's when they really start to roam. That's getting into the peak rut and will they really start to move. And I look for that post rut activity to where you get into the 15th, 14th, 12th, 17th, right around there in those locations. And that's where that big monster just does not want to give up the rut, even though there are not a lot of receptive does. Some of those uh, fawns are starting to come into estrus then. You look at those big buck opportunities, think about it again. If he's going to cruise from a mile away, from an area a long ways away from his core area where he hangs out the majority of the season, why is he going to do it when it's a high wind 80 degree day or 70 degree day? He's not going to. He's going to look for optimum cruising comp or conditions, cooler weather where he can feel comfortable, moving great distances, and those are some really high quality opportunities. Those are some of the best knockdown drag out fights where two major big boys from the neighborhood that might be a mile apart are fighting for one doe in the area that's in estrus at the end of the end of the rut. Great time to hunt. And in those locations, you're looking at the 14th through the 17th. And if you flip back a little bit, when the majority of those does are coming into heat, when you look at the 4th of November, the 8th of November, sometime around there, fast forward 28 days, Fast forward a month, get into that early December time, and that's that secondary rut. So the more defined your rut is, the more balanced herd that you have, then you're going to have a lot of does bred at a certain time. Now think of the UP of Michigan. Would be If you look at the 13th of November, I believe is the date, 7 to 10 days on either side of that, 80% of the does in the UP of Michigan in a harsh northern environment are bred. And, and you think about it, those does are, if those fawns are born too early and there's snow on the ground, they die. If they're born too late and they're too small going into the winter they die so in those northern setting it's a very defined window and guess what that secondary rut is very defined then too it's not staggered over a three-week period southwest wisconsin here i experienced some incredible secondary rut action in the early part of december and that coincides with just fast forwarding to the second rut when those does were not bred maybe even some of those fawns when they haven't been bred in that first uh, primary rut then they're bred in the secondary rut now, if you live in areas like Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, across, even over into Tennessee, Kentucky, maybe southern Iowa, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, southern Ohio, if you live in that line, West Virginia, then you can look at your rut being very defined about a week to 10 days later. I know in southern Ohio, I shot a real nice rutting buck, one of our target bucks out there on public land. I love to hunt public land every year. We've already hunted public land in Michigan this year and shot a real nice buck. I believe the date was November 22nd. I could get that wrong. It was actually the Monday morning before Thanksgiving. It opened on Saturday here in Wisconsin, the gun season. We had an incredible front that went through with about 40 degree temp drops. I followed that front down in Ohio. So when I went out in the morning on Monday, it was about 40 degrees cooler than it was the morning before. The winds were just clearing out and I shot that buck in an hour and a half. That's because he was chasing some does. Doe fawn goes by, here he comes grunting. And that was getting towards the end of November, but it's Southern Ohio, a lot different than moving up to uh, even Southern Wisconsin, Southern Michigan, Northern Ohio. So think about the best time, timing of the rut. It's coming right now. Think about that. 
places I love to hunt. I love to hunt morning hunts, uh, morning areas around bedding areas. If I'm hunting it uh, in the evening, I'm hunting a food source. I'm typically not hunting in the same stand all day unless it has that X of movement between bedding areas and between feeding all at the same time. If it's in the evening, I'm towards food. If it's the morning, I'm towards bedding areas. I place a huge priority on bedding areas. The majority of these bucks right here have been shot in the morning. Uh, some of the biggest ones with a bow in the morning. And so I really love hunting morning all rut long. Doesn't matter if pre-rut, rut, or post-rut. And when it gets into the post-rut, deer really starting to really get hungry, especially bucks. They've lost a lot of weight, and that goes in the secondary rut. Some outstanding evening opportunities in the post-rut, secondary rut periods, and even into the late season. So I hope that timing helps you. Please try to get that out of the, your, your head that you know, the moon determines when the rut is every year or anything like that. It's the same time in your area every single year. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rut this year. I've already enjoyed the pre-rut. We've had some incredible encou encounters and I might actually shoot one of those bucks or two that I passed uh, if it's a week from now or 10 days from now, but I'm enjoying sitting in the rut, enjoying the rut and watching rutting big bucks. And I hope you are too this season. And I hope you, if you want to, I have a lot of rut videos in my playlist. You just have to look up 2019 Whitetail Rut Playlist on YouTube and Rut Forecast. And you'll find my videos. You look at my playlist on the YouTube channel. I probably have 20 rut videos in there. And uh, all about the rut, cruising setups, whatever it might be, morning rut hunts, um, lots of different topics. And I hope you enjoy it. It's that time of year we all dream about or dreams are made. And I hope you connect with a mature buck, with your buck of your dreams, your target buck this season.